Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Every young woman faces the problem in her senior year of high school of what she is going to do after graduation. We'd like to suggest a possible career that has much to offer any young girl who is about to finish high school and hasn't made up her mind yet. This possible occupation is nursing. Today, the fields open to the graduate nurse are wide and varied. She can enter hospital service, private duty, research, or any one of numerous others. To become a registered nurse, you must complete the usual three-year course. Or you may combine your studies with four or five years in college and earn a B.S. degree, too. Your studies in such vital subjects as psychology, sociology, and child care are supervised by skilled doctors and graduate nurses. If you are interested in finding out more about this career, you should go to your nearest hospital or collegiate school of nursing. Or you can discuss it with your school advisor. More nurses are a growing national need. Why don't you look into it today? This message is brought to you as a public service. For several months, the mining community of Moosehide Creek had been terrorized by a daring bandit who had become known as the Masked Gunman. Late one afternoon, an orphan boy named Virgil Patton, who was employed at one of the local mines, was buying supplies at Roop Grundy's general store. As Virgie was loading the supplies on his sled, he heard another team of huskies approaching along the main street of town. Looking up, he recognized the driver of the team as an old friend. Oh, Sergeant Preston! Hi there, King. How are you, old fella? Oh, gosh, but you're a swell dog. I'm glad to see you again, Virgie. So am I. Sure is nice to see you two again, Sergeant. I didn't know you were coming to town. I didn't either till I got my orders. That was just about an hour before I left Dawson. Say, I'll bet I know why you're here. I'll bet they sent you to capture the masked gunman. Yes, that's one of the reasons, Virgie. How are you making out at the mine? Oh, I'm making out fine, Sergeant. Mr. Moffat hired me as soon as he read that letter of introduction you gave me. Uh, he treats me swell. I'm glad to hear that, Virgie. Hank Moffat's a very nice person. He lost a boy of his own about a year ago, so I felt sure he'd give you a job. Well, um, you on your way back to the mine? Oh, yes, sir. I, I just came to town to buy supplies for the cook. Say, how about coming back with me? Mr. Moffat will be glad to put you up. Why, thanks, Virgie, but I plan to stay with Mr. Weyburn, the express agent. It was at his request that I was sent here. However, I'll try to get out to the mine the next day or so. I'll tell Mr. Moffat to expect you. All right, do that. In the meantime, give him my best. Oh, I sure will, Sergeant. So long. Bye, Virgie. All right, King. Up front, boy. I'm King! A few minutes later, the sergeant drew up before the log building that served both his express office and living quarters with Clyde Weyburn, the express agent. Come along, fella. Well, Sergeant Preston and King. Hello, Clyde. Hi, Juniper. It sure is good to see the two of you. Now I can stop worrying about all this gold I have stored up here in the safe. You're shipping it out at the end of the week? That's right. I'm sending it down to Skagway. Has the masked gunman committed any more crimes recently? No, he hasn't pulled off any jobs since that hold up that Constable Ross came here to investigate. 
Well, say, why are we standing here gabbing this way? Take off your parka, Sergeant, and make yourself comfortable. Not just yet, Klein. First, I'd like to go around and question some of the people who've been held up by the masked gunman. All right, Sergeant, you do that, and I'll have supper cooking by the time you get back. That evening, after helping the cook prepare supper for the mine hands at the bunkhouse, Virgie Patton carried a tray of food over to the mine office for the foreman, Hank Moffat, and his younger brother, Roy Moffat, who worked as Hank's assistant. The two brothers usually ate by themselves, apart from the rest of the crew. Hank was seated at the table alone as Virgie entered. Evening, Virgie. Oh, good evening, Mr. Moffat. Hey, that grub smells mighty good. What have you got in that pan? A mulligan stew. <laughs> Just what I thought. Uh, oh, by the way, has my brother gotten back from town yet? Oh, yes, sir. I saw him unhitching his team just a minute ago. Well, that's probably him now. About time you were getting back, Roy. That's a pleasant way to greet me. What's eating you now? Nothing's eating me. I just think you ought to spend a little less time in town and a little more time here at the mine. Yeah, 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 I know. I ought to be an earnest, hard-working guy like you, and I might get ahead in the world. I suppose you were at the cafe gambling again. Well, what if I was? You're out practically every night carousing around. And now you're starting to do the same thing in the afternoons. Whose business is it? Mine or yours? Now look, Roy, there's no sense taking that attitude. Don't you realize I have your own best interests at heart? I've always felt responsible for you. You know that. Oh, so now you're going to pull that big brother act on me. Well, you can save your advice because I'm not interested. All my life I've had to listen to your sermons. And I'll tell you right now I'm getting fed up. I won't say another word. Pour me some of that coffee, will you, Virgie? Oh, yes, sir. Thanks. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Moffat, uh, Sergeant Preston's in town. Oh, uh, Sergeant Preston. Oh, yes, sir. He just arrived this afternoon. He was sent here to capture the masked gunman. Well, that's good news. Where's he staying? With uh, Mr. Weyburn, the express agent. He said Mr. Weyburn was the one who asked to have him sent here. Well, I hope he gets out here to the mine to see us. He said he'd try to during the next day or so. It's fine. I can hardly wait to see him. As soon as supper was over, Roy Moffat hitched up his team again and drove back into town. He halted in front of Ruth Grundy's general store. Whoa! Whoa, you asking? Whoa! It's you, Muffet. What's up? Plenty. I just found out that Sergeant Preston is in town. I already know that. I saw him talking to young Patton in front of the store this afternoon. According to Virgie, he's staying with Clyde Weyburn, the express agent. And it was Weyburn who asked to have him sent here. I figured his visit had something to do with that gold at the express office. That gold isn't the only reason he's here. He's out to get the masked gunman. You're not getting cold feet all of a sudden, are you? No, but I'm not getting stupid all of a sudden either. It's one thing to pull off a robbery when there's no chance of the police picking up my trail. But that dog of Preston's is a tracker. He can trail a man by scent. Man, what about it? What about it? Don't you realize this ruins our plan to grab that gold? Uh, listen, Muffet. I've steered you right so far, and I'm not letting you down now. I've uh, got an idea how to get Preston out of the way. Yeah? Let's hear it. Weyburn must have sent for Preston because he was afraid the masked gunman might steal that gold shipment. You sure, that's obvious. So what? Suppose Preston were to capture the masked gunman tonight. You crazy. I'm the masked gunman. Sure, sure. I'm not talking about you. What I mean is, suppose Preston were to capture someone he thought was the masked gunman. You mean frame someone? That's right. Preston would take him back to Dawson to stand trial. Weyburn and the express driver would be thrown off guard, thinking there was no more danger of a holdup, which would make it easy for you to grab the gold. Yeah, I see what you mean. But how can we work it? Who can we frame as a masked gunman? Uh, you uh, don't like that brother of yours, do you? What do you think? <laughs> You suppose you could go back to the mine and get me a mitten of his without him noticing what you were up to? I suppose so. Why? All right, listen. I'll tell you the plan I got in mind. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. He did it! 
A home run way out of the left field stands, and the home team wins the game. Are you kids there? Are you seeing the exciting homers that your home team makes and cheering them on? Come out to the ball game now as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right inside packages of Quaker puffed wheat, Quaker puffed rice, Muffet shredded wheat, Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see a wonderful major or minor league baseball game free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry, get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker puffed wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, just send a box top from the regular package of Quaker ready-to-eat cereal. Send to baseball... Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't wait and miss exciting games. Act now. Now to continue. Sergeant Preston had come to the mining community of Moosehide Creek and was staying with Clyde Weyburn, the express agent. Late that night, they were aroused by a loud pounding on the front door of the express office. Clyde Weyburn answered the knocking and found himself looking into the excited face of... What in thunder's wrong? Uh, I've just been robbed by the masked gunman. The masked gunman. Holy mackerel. Well, don't stand there gawking. Where's Sergeant Preston in the back room? Hey, Sergeant. Who is it, Clyde? It's Roof Grundy. He's just been held up by the masked gunman. Be right with you. Tell me all about it, Roof. Uh, the Seaman skunk came pounding on my door about an hour ago. When I opened up, he put a gun on me, made me unlock the safe. Then he tied me up, grabbed all the money and gold, and made his getaway. How'd you get loose? Well, I managed to hop over to the shelf and get a hold of a knife. Took a lot of squirming, but I finally cut myself loose. Well, looks like this is your chance to catch up with the masked gunman, Sergeant. Good turn, tootin' it is. The sneaking polecat made a big mistake this time. What do you mean? He accidentally dropped a mitten while he was making his getaway. Oh? I reckon that'll be enough to give King his scent, won't it, Sergeant? Should be, Roop. Let's get over to the store right away. From Roop Grundy's general store, the trail led out of town and up the creek to the mine at which Hank Moffat was foreman. <laughs> King had gone directly to the door of the mine office, which Hank and Roy used as their living quarters. A short time later, after the sergeant had knocked several times, the door was opened by Hank, who was holding an oil lamp in one hand. Well, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Hank. May we come in? Why, sure. sure. Thanks. As the sergeant and Roop Grundy entered the office, they saw Roy Moffat standing sleepily in the doorway that led to one of the back rooms. Hi, sergeant. Hello, Roy. Hello, Roop. Hello. I reckon you two aren't paying social calls at this time of night. What's up? Do you recognize this mitten? Why, sure, it's mine. Well, I said that. Then you must be the masked gunman. I thought his voice sounded familiar. What in blazes are you talking about? Uh, don't pull that innocent stuff on me, Hank Moffat. Roop was held up tonight by the masked gunman. The bandit accidentally dropped this mitten while he was making his getaway. Great Scott. King got the scent from the mitten, and the trail led here. Well, I can explain that. And so can Roop. I was at the store tonight. You're darn tootin' you were. Wearing a mask and carrying a gun. That's a lie, Roop. What were you doing at the store? Well, Roop came around to the mine office tonight about 11 o'clock. What's that? You heard me. You said Roy got into a fight in front of the store and was knocked out. He wanted me to come and get him, so I went back to the store with you. But when we got there, Roy wasn't there. You said he must have come to and left, so I came back to the mine. I'll be hanged if that's not the craziest story I ever heard. You're saying it never happened? I certainly am. He's making the whole thing up to explain why King was able to follow his scent. Roy... Did you get into a fight tonight in front of Roop Grundy's store? No, I was at the cafe all evening. I see. You remember dropping this mitten at the store, Hank? No, no, I don't. Matter of fact, when Roop came and got me, I could only find one of my bearskin mittens, so I wore another pair. Still trying to bluff your way out, huh? Now look here, Sergeant. Are you going to believe his crazy accusations? Frankly, I don't know what to believe, Hank. Do you have any objection if I search this place? No, none at all. Go ahead and search all you like. The sergeant began by searching the outer office. Then he went into Hank's room. A few minutes later, he emerged carrying a large sack in one hand. Ever seen this sack before, Hank? Well, no. I never laid eyes on it before. Well, by Sunday, I've seen it before. That's the sack the masked gunman used for the money and gold after he cleaned out my safe. What's that? 
Where in blazes did you find it, Sergeant? Under your bunk. Under my bunk? What's in it? Gold dust, paper currency, a Colt forty-five, and a black mask. But holy mackerel. You Stephen Polkett. I reckon this proves you're the masked gunman. Sergeant, so help me, I swear I don't know how that sack got into my room. I'm sorry, Hank, but the evidence is all against you. I'm placing you under arrest in the name of the Crown. The following day, the news spread up and down Moosehide Creek of Hank Moffat's arrest as the masked gunman. Virgie had come to the express office where the sergeant was holding Hank prisoner. I don't care what the evidence is against him, Sergeant. I'm sure Mr. Moffat didn't commit that robbery. Thanks, Virgie. I'm glad someone has faith in me. I don't like to see you wearing those handcuffs any more than Virgie does, Hank. But unless we can prove that sack was planted in your room, you'll have to stand trial for the robbery. I don't like to say this, but... Well, if you ask me, Mr. Moffat's brother could have done it. Uh, Roy? Oh, no, Virgie. You mustn't even suggest such a thing. Oh, but he hates you. Look how he was talking last night at supper. I, I know we have our differences, but Roy's my own flesh and blood. He wouldn't frame his own brother... Well, the idea is fantastic. I'm not so sure of that, Hank. If your version of what happened last night is true, then someone certainly framed you, and Root Grundy is in on the plot. Sure, Grundy's doing his best to frame you. There's no doubt about that. But that doesn't prove Roy had anything to do with this dirty scheme. Root couldn't have carried out the scheme unless he was sure beforehand of Roy's movements. Besides, how'd he get hold of your mitten, and who planted the sack in your room? The fact is, Roy's about the only person who could have helped Roop frame you. Hang it all, Sergeant. I, I just can't believe it. The whole thing doesn't make sense. Why should anyone want to frame me anyhow? Well, your arrest would certainly work to the advantage of the real masked gunman. But what do you mean? If I should take you back to Dawson, thinking I had captured the masked gunman, the way would be clear for the real crook to steal that express company gold shipment. Say, I never thought of that. But you're not suggesting that Grundy or... Or Roy might be the masked gunman. It's not impossible, Hank. Isn't there any way you can clear Mr. Moffat? I'm not sure, Virgie. I have a plan that might work, if you'd be willing to help me. I'll be glad to help you, Sergeant. What do you want me to do? Well, here's what I have in mind, Virgie. I'm going to give you this whistle of mine. The sergeant explained his plan, and Virgie listened eagerly. When he'd received his instructions, he went back to the mine. Early that afternoon, the sergeant prepared to start back to Dawson with his prisoner. A crowd gathered in front of the express office to see them off. Where are you taking, Hank, Sergeant? Back to Dawson to stand trial. I sure never suspected that Hank Moffat was the masked gunman. Neither did anyone else. It's plenty slick, all right, the way he pulled off all those robberies. But it didn't take Sergeant Preston long to catch up with him. That's right. All right, King, up front, boy. Line the team. On King, on your husband. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, which would you rather do? Read about your favorite baseball team in the papers? Or see a game on the screen? Or be right in the ballpark, yelling for the players on your team, eating hot dogs, drinking soda pop, and having the time of your life? Golly, nothing beats the fun at a ballpark. Come out to the game now as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate without paying a cent. If you're 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult, you can now get a free baseball ticket right inside a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get in on the fun. Right away, get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker puffed wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, just send the box top from the regular packages of these same cereals. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue. Late that night, Roy Moffat left the mine and walked into town. He went to Roop Grundy's general store and rapped softly on the back door. A short time later, a glow of light appeared behind the shuttered windows, and the door opened. What do you say? I've got to hand it to you, Roop. This scheme worked out perfectly. Sure, I knew it would. Take off your buggy. You can hang it there in the hook. Okay. <laughs> I 
sure got a laugh out of the way Preston fell for that frame-up. He's probably patting himself on the back right now for capturing the masked gunman. <laughs> and all the time, the real masked gunman is sitting right here in his chair. You may be the masked gunman, Moffitt, but don't forget... I tipped you off to all the jobs you pulled and hid the loot for you afterwards. Sure, sure. I'm not denying that. Which reminds me, most of the loot is still here in the store. I trust you're keeping it safe till we make the final split. Don't worry. I've got it hidden away in the loft. We'll make the final split after we get our hands on Express Company gold. Suits me. Did you find out exactly when the shipments leave? What's the matter, I thought I had my tobacco here in my pocket, but I must have left it in my pocket. Just a second. I'll go and get it. With casual, unhurried steps, Roy walked over to his parka, which was hanging beside the door. Suddenly, he jerked the door open. Hey, got you. Where'd you pit? Yeah. Listening outside the door. I thought I heard a noise on the porch. Uh, I wasn't listening. Shut up and come on inside. You must have followed me here from the mine. Yes, what did you think you were doing, Fergie? Playing detective? Hey, look at this. You mean that braided cord around his neck? A cord? And what's on the end of it? Gould whistle. Yeah, Sergeant Preston's whistle. Holy mackerel. What do you suppose? I'm supposing that maybe Preston isn't quite so dumb as we thought. How about it, Virgie? Did he tell you to spy on us? Uh, I won't tell you. You'll tell us, all right, or I'll twist your arm off. No, no, you can't make me talk. Virgie struggled desperately, but he was terrified by the menacing manner of the two crooks. And the pressure which Roy was exerting on his arm was agonizing. Finally, he broke down. All right. All right, I'll talk. That's better. It's true. Sergeant Preston did tell me to spy on you. I followed you here from the mine. What about that whistle? I was supposed to blow it and signal to him as soon as I had something to report. You mean he didn't come back to Dawson after all? I why I'd go on talk. Oh, all right. No, he, he didn't go back to Dawson. He's hiding up in the hill somewhere near Devil's Jaw. I was supposed to go there to signal him. Well, it's under we're really in a mess. The kid heard everything we said. And if we kill him, Preston will suspect who did it. Looks like we'll have to take care of Preston and the kid both. Come on, get your parka. We're going out to Devil's Draw. A short time later, the two crooks arrived at Devil's Draw. After hiding their team in a clump of trees some distance away, they forced Virgie to stand in the open while they themselves ducked down behind a group of large boulders with their guns drawn and ready to fire. Then Roy gave the order for the signal. All right, Virgie, blow that whistle. And remember, when Preston shows up, don't try warning him away before he gets in range. Because if you do, you'll get a bullet right in the back. All right, blow. Virgie gave a shrill blast on the whistle. As the sound died away, the two crooks settled down tensely to await the result. Minute after minute dragged by. And then suddenly, they caught sight of two figures picking their way down the moonlit slope. Here he comes now. Who's that with him? Must be Hank. We'll have to get rid of him, too. You plug him and I'll plug Preston. Scarcely daring to breathe, the crooks waited for their victims to come within range. Finally, Roy whispered. All right. They're close enough. Let's gun them down. But as the two crooks took aim, they heard a sudden rustle in the underbrush nearby. Hey, what's that? A split second later, oh. a snarling dog hurtled out of the underbrush. Oh. Help me, oh. dog! Help me! The group went down beneath King's savage onslaught. But Roy pulled himself free of the struggling pair and turned his gun on King. I'll get him! Oh. In his excitement, Roy had exposed himself above the boulders. And the sergeant had drilled him instantly. Help! Help me! A few moments later, the sergeant reached the spot, and after picking up the crook's guns, he handcuffed Rupe Grundy. Roy was unconscious from the shock of his wound, but he soon came to when the sergeant applied first aid. Where in blazes did that dog ears come from, Preston? I suspected we might be walking into trouble, so I sent King on ahead to scout. Hey, do Chevy. What made you suspect trouble? The signal that Virgie blew on the whistle? The signal? What do you mean? He was supposed to call you by blowing on it, wasn't he? Yes, by blowing three short blasts. That was the come-ahead signal we agreed on. Instead, he blew one long blast. So naturally, I knew something was wrong. Oh, all that rotten luck. Virgie, they captured you, huh? Oh, yes, sir. And then your brother twisted my arm and made me tell why I was spying on him. And why I had the sergeant's whistle. Oh, Roy, I, I still can't understand what made you turn this way. And to think you were ready to commit murder just now. Ah, shut up. That will do. 
Did you find out anything before they caught you, Virgie? Oh, I'll say I did, Sergeant. Roy is the real masked gunman, and Ruth Grundy gave him the tip-off on all the jobs he pulled. Most of the looters hidden up in the loft at the store. Good work, Virgie. Well, Hank, this puts you in the clear. But without Virgie's help, you might have gone to prison. Yes, don't think I don't realize that. Virgie, I reckon you know I lost a boy about your age. Never thought I'd find anyone to take his place, but... Uh... Well, how would you like it if I were to adopt you as my son? Golly, but that'd be swell, Mr. Moffat. No more of that Mr. Moffat stuff now, Virgie. From now on, you call me Dad. Okay, Dad. Okay. The last gunman and his confederate are captured, and Virgie has a new father. All of which means that this case is closed. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Here's a mutual note for you. Mutual is a network that has programs you can enjoy throughout the week. If you like question and answer fun, then you'll find there are all sorts of quiz programs you can listen to on Mutual. You can try and outguess the contestants and see if you know the right answer before they do. Even if you don't know, it's loads of fun listening to others. And you can learn a lot at the same time, too. And some of you boys and girls probably have favorite songs and favorite singers that you like to listen to. When you tune into Mutual, you'll hear many of the stars you like best, singing and playing the kind of music you enjoy most. Don't forget, too, there are programs of outdoor adventure and others of barn dance music and jamboree. There's plenty of good listening waiting for you on your Mutual dial. Tune in every weekday afternoon for Mutual's famous programs, especially designed for adventure lovers. And remember to listen other times as well for different kinds of programs you like over most of these stations. Two men are driving through a blizzard toward the ghost town on Midas Creek. Ho, 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 How's the young one on the sled? He's still passed out. What do we do with him? Get rid of him. He'll take the blame for the robbery. Where do we get rid of him? The old mine. It's deep and dark and deserted. They'll never find him there. Marsh! Watch out! But Sergeant Preston is heading for Midas Creek as well. And murder rides the trail ahead of him. What new dangers will he meet in that strange and lonely ghost town? Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.